Hey guys, welcome back to Tamiya Legends and once again thank you for stopping by. So obviously today's edition is um, Schumacher Legends. So we're going to start the build of the Schumacher Cat XLS, which I'm super excited about. Um, right off the bat I have no idea how this is going to go because I've heard some nightmare stories about it, um, about the build. Um, so what we'll do is, I have, I'll say from the start I have no idea if this is going to be one video, 20 minutes long with the full build, or it's going to be more detailed. What we'll do is we'll just do it section at a time. I'll do the build off camera and then I'll go back to each section once it's built just to if I have any problems with it or whatever. But I'm really looking forward to building this. This is a this is a classic. Um so let's get cracking. So let's have a look at what we get. So we'll just put the stuff to the right which we're gonna need. So that's the certificate which I showed you in the first video. Need the shell. I'll put all the polycarbonate to the side for now, apart from the under tray, because I know we need that. Don't need wheels or tyres. That's the chassis. And we've got some. So I'm not too sure we're going to need any of that. So let's um, get it tidied up and ready to build. Right, so just trying to get my head around how the Schumacher kit's going to work. So obviously in the manual you have step one, which is just a sh the bottom chassis and just putting one of the antenna brackets on, I think. So there's a load of bags here, but the um, first bag you have to find is parts bag A, and within that you have all these different parts. Now I've just put these in number order, starting from 10 and going down. Um, so step one matches up with um, step one parts bag which looks very straightforward to be honest so now I understand how this is going to go um, so let's um, start building right that's step one and step two completed and absolutely no dramas so our antennas on and the battery clips are in I've just put the uh, battery in just to make sure that it, it fits so I'll whiz that back out uh, and then we'll move on to the next step so I got to page of step three, which is for the shorty battery, so you don't touch that. Um, so the next stage was step four. Uh, now, interestingly, you go straight to the under tray and you have to cut it out. So I've cut the under tray out. It, it's rough. Uh, I've not smoothed the edges, um, but I've got it to the right shape that it needs to be. Um, and then the next step is to fit this rear gearbox housing on. So let's get that on. So I've cut the under tray out um, and I've started mounting this. Um, gearbox assembly and I'm going to bottle it all down. Now in the instructions it shows you to use a, a reamer on the under tray and, and um, open four holes up which I did um, and this is a little bit not very good. You see the fourth hole how far out that is so I've opened up to the under tray markings and it's probably three four mil well three mil in the wrong place so that's not good so I'm going to have to open that up now, which is not ideal at all, and then bolt that down. Right, that's stage 5 complete, um, which is fitting these two devices into the gearbox housing. Um, I had a, a little look, because I was quite disappointed I had to open that hole up. Um, and you can see now why you're building it around the under tray, because it's... it's you, you've got it's gonna really get to be pushed over once it's all in so maybe these holes line up um, but um, anyway that's that section done so let's move on to section six which is building a diff up right we had a bit of a mission with that spur gear I kept taking it apart um, but eventually I had to ask someone the problem is obviously you can only get this nut so tight because you can only hold on to this um, and obviously don't want to over tighten but when everything's tightened up I'll try to show you look at the wobble on that spur but apparently that's 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 correct which uh, has shocked me a little bit but obviously once the motor's in with the pinion the pinion's going to keep that spur true and obviously there's a second housing to go on so there's a little bit of wobble within those, those two bearings so when they're tight but saying that you know that's still got a hell of a wobble anyway I'm happy with that now. Um, so I jumped on to step eight and nine and I built the um, rear gear assembly up, um, which is quite in depth actually. It's it's enjoyable, it's completely different from Tamiya. Um, so you tighten this fully up and then back it off quarter of a turn. 
there's a couple of bearings in there. Um, there's um, ball diff in the centre. So if you hold that centre gear, turn one of the wheels, that's your diff working. Um, but it's just a little bit easier to do it like that to feel to feel it feels super smooth. So next up is section ten, where there's these horrible. You got to snap these little. Um, or you make you basically make the universal joints. You get this little tool to do it. So let's crack on with that. So that's that back end done. Um, these are not the easiest to fit in to get these clipped in. They give you a couple of these little tools. Um, once you actually get the hang of it and you understand what you need to do and where to apply the pressure and to what side, it is actually quite straightforward. Um, so we've got the unis on both sides, obviously we've got the diff. Um, so I think the next stage now um, is to get the small belts um, yeah, and the other side of the um, rear gearbox housing. So we'll get that all in position now. And that's that assembly together, um, so obviously there's the two you can see that two rear belts in left and right and then obviously the centre one for the front is just loose. Um, the way you fit this in, um, you do the adjustment to tighten the belts up later. Um, but that's pretty free. Um, as I say, the gearbox housings are on now with the opposite sides are in. So that's that pretty much done. So next stage now it's telling me to dig out the, um, the belt cover at the top, cut it out to shape and then we've got to mount two screws, two rear screws to just bolt the top deck down and then we put, the cover goes on top and puts the other two screws so that'll be all four screws will be in there holding that. So um, let's get cutting um, that out now. Right, that's what she looks like now. So as you can see the top, um, the belt covers on that's cut out, it's only bolted down with two screws at the moment, um, front anti-roll bars on, um, you have to solder these, I don't know if you can see that, which is interesting, so I've soldered those on both sides, um, now looking at the instructions now, the next stage is to build the front diff up, which is pretty much identical or very similar to the, the rear, then fit the unis to it and then it's just to put the front end on. So I'll get that built up because I don't see any problems with that and then uh, we'll see how that goes. Well, what a mission that was to get it to that stage. Um, I can understand now what people are talking about where you have to kind of make things fit yourself. It's kind of roughly there but you've got to kind of, kind of fine tune it. So what we've done since the last one, um, we've got the um, front diff assembly built up which is nice and smooth. We've got that fitted in now. Um, what you have to do before you tighten the front end up, you've got to um, set these two um, belt adjusters, which are these things here, one on either side, um, so you can get the two belts um, to the correct tension. Now the issue I had was, it seems to me that one belt was not, the belts weren't identical, that's how it certainly came across, and the left hand side belt was a little bit slacker. So when I made the adjustment here to get this belt to the right tension, this one was a little bit too tight. But these two settings have to be identical, otherwise obviously the, the axle won't be running straight. So I've been messing around with that for a while, um, and I've got them, um, so the, the left one is bang on. I would say the right one's a little bit tight, but I'm not too sure what I can do about that just yet. Luckily you can go back to all this stuff before you run it. Um, and then it's onto the front where you've got your front adjustment where it just slides forward and back because you, you keep these nuts slack. Um, so I've got the front belt tensioned up and it's all tightened up now which gives us, um, so it's all moving freely. I, I don't know what's how free it's supposed to be so I'm going to have to go back to this at some point but as I said it's all very easy um, adjustable. So the front diff itself, um, I would say, is about cock on, but I think I'm going to have to revisit the re rear diff because it just feels it's it's too tight. You can see how it works with belts turning the opposite way. So I'm going to I'm going to slacken that rear diff off slightly, but again I don't have to do that just yet. Um, I may as well carry on with the build because it's all stuff I can do. The the diffs are um, easily adjustable when 
to, to set to tune the car up um, as you're running it so that's easy enough so that's all bolted down hard together now so um, let's get cracking with the next stage right that's the rear wing mount device on there's a big bolt that goes through here which is a bit of a mission to get this threaded rod through um, we've got the two um, arms on now and I found that really tricky to be honest to get in you're working around the under tray and I've gone back over the instructions and it's, it doesn't tell you to take the under tray off but if I, if I could it would make life so much easier but to be honest it'd be a bit of a mission I'd have to undo all this front end again so I guess we'll just um, pursue down this route so that's I think that's the back end as far as I'm going for now um, and then next up we're going to start putting some stuff on the um, the front end but um, yeah it's it takes a bit of time to build but uh, let's crack right, on. So I've just installed the um, Schumacher crashback system which you've never seen it's pretty cool so the, these arms pivot um, and these bands here go across and keep it firm but it allows it that little bit of play to move so if you smash anything on the wheel it's not going to break pretty cool system and that's it with the bands fitted <clears throat> you just use three bands um, it's quite difficult for me to move it but you'll see it gives you this play now should you smash into anything right next stage is the um, hubs and these are a bit of a mission as well um, obviously they're all um, left right front and back so you've got to build them one at a time so what I've actually done to save a bit of time is I've, the first one I built I've actually fitted as well. Um, I just think it's easier for me to do it like that. But what you will need, these are all thread locked inside, but you'll need a very small screwdriver to get into some of these just to get a grip on some of the stuff. Um, once you understand how it clips together it is very easy, but I must admit for the first five minutes I was I built this wrong a, a couple of times, but I didn't realise that these cracking inside the hub um, so that's that so what I'll do next is I'll just I'll build all the other two hubs up and we'll get all the hubs on the car right that's all the four hubs on um, everything's free and loose as it should um, it wasn't difficult you just got to take your time and make sure you get everything in the right place um, so next up now I think we've got to fit the um, rear shock tower right, the next stage was to build the shocks um, but I got a heads up that you definitely need um, a pair of circlet pliers which I don't have so I'm going to have to get some of those so I'm going to bypass the building of the shocks and go straight to whatever's next right that's the rear track rod on there um, they'll, they will need adjusting but obviously I'll need the wheels on so that's that done I've got the steering in um, I've got the um, anti-roll bar now working or fitted I should say um, with the connections um, steering I can't really show you. The problem why people struggle is because, because it does seem like an afterthought, but the, to fit the steering um, in order of the manual, it is doable, but it's it's tricky. Um, and it feels a little bit tight, so I'm going to have to make some adjustments. Everything's thread, rock, uh, thread locked, so you've got to be sort of, before you sort of tighten it all up and finish it, you've got to make sure it's there, but there are adjustments to be made. Um, but it's all pretty good so that's that so what I'm going to do now because I still haven't got the um, circuit pliers I'm going to get the wheels and tyres out that I ordered I'll just put this up so you can see it so we've got the Schumacher softs front and backs and we've also got the chrome wheels so I'll open these up fit these to the tyres um, and then we'll mount those to the car and then I can alter the tie rods um, a, a, a little bit more um, and then we'll get out and get some circlet pliers. Right, that's the shocks built up and fitted. Um, I went to three different stores trying to get some circlet pliers and um, I only found one store that did them and um, the pins were too wide to fit on the circlets I had, which is unfortunate. So that's the rear ones. So I had to um, bodge it a little bit and I used two very small screwdrivers that I had and a pair of pliers to um, close the crimp up and then uh, stick it in the shocks so I've got some sore thumbs um, but um, at least they're on so that's looking mighty fine um, the wheels are a little bit better angled now um, but as I said um, you can't do that properly until the car's finished um, I am liking the shocks 
It was very, very smooth. So the next thing I'll do now, um, we'll get the body out and the wing and we'll cut it and just um, get it mounted. So that's it pretty much done. Wings mounted. Um, I've cut it out best I can at the moment but it'll need tweaking. There's no cut lines on the side of the wings so you kind of do it yourself. So it's a little bit difficult to match up. Um, the shell, you have to cut that hole out for the spur nut. Um, and I need to do some more work on the front end just to get it sat flatter. But um, that's good enough for now for the build. Looks pretty epic doesn't it? And that's the build done. And I've got to be honest, I found it a real pleasure to build. Um, it wasn't nearly as bad as I'd read about. Um, it all depends on what sort of kit building level you're at. And I'm by no means an expert. I'm not trying to big myself up. But I have built a lot of kits and I have built a lot, a lot of non-Tamiya kits. Um, I've actually built probably three or four Schumacher kits before that. But they were all touring cars, not buggies. Um, but there's very many similarities between them. Um, if you've only built a Tamiya car, then you're going to notice a big difference with this kit. The way I describe this build is everything's almost there, but you just have to find tweak certain areas. Um, and you need different tools. So you need to be equipped before you start the build because there's certain things you will need and you just you won't be able to bodge it with a, a posi screwdriver and a flat blade. You, you will need other things. I mean, it's all in the manual what you need. Um, one of the disappointing things for me was you had to, well, you pretty much had to have the circlet pliers. Um, and over here, they're like $30, you know, just to fit four circlips. I mean, I've never had to use them before on anything else. Um, so you, you really do need those. I wouldn't advise sort of the bodging method that I did because my thumbs are throbbing. Um, anyway, um, I'm well chuffed with that. As I say, there's, there's tweaks to be done, but the overall build quality I found awesome. There was nothing missing. I was told there was screws missing, uh, wrong parts in wrong places. No, not at all. It's a very straightforward build. The steering is a pain. Um, you could do with three hands to be honest if you follow the schedule of a manual but you don't have to you can build it before that um, but it's very manageable if you follow the um, the manual so that's pretty much it there's now it's built I have to go back to it and do certain things um, as I said the body fitment and what have you we've got to look at but I'm happy with the front diff that's that's nice but the rear diff is tight. I mean, it's trying to drive the front wheels. You know, it's, it's I, I, I believe it's too tight, but um, if any of you guys have stayed to the end, any of you Schumacher guys, I, I'd, I'd like to know how free it should be. Um, the overall, that noise you're gonna hear is just a nut rubbing on the body. But it's nice and free. So I like that. Steering is awesome. That's rubbing on the body as well. But it's it's nice and the shocks shocks are awesome very nice it gives you two different oils in the kits the, the thicker oil goes in the rears um, and the thinner in the fronts and as i say i've not adjusted anything on this um, it's sitting far too high up but obviously when it's got a battery motor and electrics it's probably going to sit around about there um, what else can i say that's pretty much it really enjoyable build um, if you contemplate and getting one, I certainly would. Um, there is one difference I just want to say quickly, uh, and this might be down to me not being knowledgeable on setup and things like that. When I'm, I'm going to compare this to a Tamiya kit. When you build a Tamiya kit and you get to this stage, it's just really a case of spraying the body, putting decals on, fitting electrics, and just blast it. This isn't ready to blast. Um, um, there's, certain, there's certain areas I'm going to have to look at and, and tweak again um, and then actually look at the overall setup because there's such a lot of setup on this car for um, setting it up for the race track or wherever you're going to run it so I need to get into all that but um, that's taken me about two full, no, two full, I've been on it two days uh, I'm going to have a break now because I don't know about you guys but I um, by the time I'm getting to the end of a build I've kind of had enough of it <laughs> Um, so I like to just get it to this stage and then just put it on the shelf and forget about it. 
obviously, as I said, we'll get the body mounted properly and then we'll, we're going to go with the Masami um, colours. Um, I just think if the real box art retro is going to look a little bit dated, um, but I might get a spare body at some point. But um, yeah, that'll be the next stage to get the body seated, spray decals on. And then um, again, we've got a lovely reedy 19 turn brushed old vintage motor to stick in it. Um, we'll probably run it on 2S, maybe NIM. Maybe NIM for the weight, actually. It's, it's, a, it's a very light car. Anyway, I've rattled on long enough. So if you have made it to the end, much appreciated. If you have got any setup um, information or help for me, please stick that in the comments below. That'd be much appreciated. Um, and always guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you are new to this channel, if you could please consider liking and subscribing to support us for our weekly videos. And most of all, if anyone is watching this, please hit that bell notification button. Um, hardly anyone hits that and it will really increase this channel's views if you could do that. Right, I'll shut up. Um, happy RCing guys.